Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my mum Donna. Hello. Who's joining me for this month's comfort book club discussion of The Lark by E. Nesbitt. Been so looking forward to me this too. chat. Me too, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to all of the comfort book club readers who sent in a voice message to add to our discussion this month. I'm looking forward to including all of those lovely messages as we chat about the book today. But I recommend getting a cup of tea, maybe a little sweet treat. Yeah. We've got our damson mm. plum crumble, Delicious. which we thought was appropriate because we got the damsons from the orchard that we have access to and we thought yes the the heroines of the lark would yes. approve <laughs> they would indeed i'm sure we'll try a little bit mm. i've shared the recipe for this on my blog by the way so you can make it as well mm. Mm. you did a brilliant job it is delicious thank you mm. so good i love a crumble me too mm. <laughs> best way to use all of the autumnal fruit it is I'll link the recipe in the description box down below. But yes, and do remember to stay till the end of this episode because we'll be announcing... Yeah, big excitement. Yeah, yeah. All of the Comfort Book Club reads through to January and including January at the end. So if you want to find out what all the upcoming reads yes, are... Yes, hopefully you'll be reading along with us. <laughs> exactly, I <Yeah>. hope so. <laughs> but yes, we'll get to that at the end of this chat. Mm. But first things first with The Lark... So this is a real favourite of both of ours. It is. I absolutely love this book and I really wanted us to do it, even though perhaps it isn't, it's more of a spring summer book than, well, summer book, I guess it is, but yeah. it does end in October. There's a little bit yes, of Yes, on my feeling. birthday. The yes, I know. Of I think this is why it's always stuck in my, my yeah. mind. Yeah, I And know. of course it's its centenary, isn't it? It is, yes. It's been a hundred years since The Lark was first published in yeah. 1922. So we thought we couldn't let this year go by without choosing it for no, the Comfort no. Book Club. And I'm so glad that a lot of the listeners who sent a voice message really enjoyed it too. For us, it's just this really heartwarming, light-hearted, fun yes. sort of story. Yes. And that was really what one of our readers, um, Penny from the States, said as well. And I was so glad to hear that. So let me share Penny's message. Hi, Miranda and Donna. This is Penny from the US. I love the lark. It was charming, lighthearted, and hopeful. I like the scene when the two cousins set off to explore the neighboring village, walking by the cabbage fields and embracing their lark. I could so easily envision the cottage and the big house, like I stepped into a fairy tale on a summer's day. I had concern for them after they were released from school and into the world without the security of their expected income. And again, when they began the endeavor of managing the big house and taking on paying guests or pigs. Their youthful optimism, energy, and naivety always kept them going. Everything turned around for them, even with setbacks. Thank you for this funny, entertaining, delightful read. Oh, thank you, Penny. Thank you so much, Penny. I'm so glad you enjoyed yeah. it. And well, it, it is solid comfort, really, isn't it? Really it really is. is. Yeah. I just find yeah. it is such a comforting book. And like Penny said, there's this really hopeful... Yeah. Feel very much to it. optimistic. Yes, it's a very yeah. optimistic book. And I think it's even more poignant when you realise that yeah. Inez Bitt wrote it at the end of her life. She died in 1924. It was her last novel, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, The yeah. Lark was her very last novel. Yeah. And I find it quite extraordinary because she had a difficult life very uh, difficult you've been reading a bit of her biography i really have and i can recommend this one highly the life and loves of e nesbitt by eleanor fitzsimmons and it's very very good and my goodness what a life she had yes. uh, you know her husband was a bit of a philanderer to say the least and <laughs> yes the lots first of husband yes, yes 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 um but i think it's amazing that obviously even by the end of her life mm -hmm. she was able to write a book 
full of optimism, full of hu- humour, full of the vivacity of youth, really, yes, too. absolutely. I thought it was a very youthful book. Very youthful. And I think, too, that she, she'd she gone through the war along with everybody else, mm. of course, in Great Britain. And that she came out, and there are parts of the darkness of that in this, but it was yes. still such an upbeat and um joyful joyful really yes right. i yeah. agree yeah and there's something so witty about <laughs> her writing i love the dialogue between jane and lucilla or yes. lucy as she's yes. nicknamed uh, there's just this lightness of touch to it and there some really real is. wit And Jason from New Zealand sent a message in and he commented on Inez Butt's wonderful, witty writing. So let's hear from Jason. Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. What a lark, what a plunge it was to spend time with the cousins Jane and Lucy who tackle misfortune with courage and creativity when their caretaker gambles away their inheritance, leaving them a small cottage. Nesbitt's writing style, like the funny quips between the cousins, makes this story intelligent and real. For example, Lucy protests, I should like to know whether it's burglary or just housekeeping when we are creeping about see the court. And Jane replies, it's neither. It's what they call a youthful indiscretion. The writing is so witty. Nesbitt was a founding member of the Fabian Society, and there are light touches of utopian ideals in how characters from different parts of the social fabric help the cousins to overcome misfortune. There is such a thing as community after all. Finally, I adored the ending, showing that sometimes fate delivers on promises and what the heart seeks will be revealed. Like when Jane sees John Rochester as being a real-world outcome of her spoken incantation on St. John's Eve. Jane gets to have a chance at building a future with him, but not before she makes a successful life for herself as an independent business person. It's just charming and delightful. So now it feels like my bag is packed, the taxi is on its way to fetch me from Cedar Court, and my bark is on the shore to sail me to New Zealand, where Mr. Dix's people are also at, another detail I adored. I feel sad that the adventure is over, but I'm glad I can visit Jane and Lucy again by rereading the book. Miranda and Donna, thank you both for recommending the perfection that is The Lark. Oh, thank you, Jason, as always. Thank you, Jason. Yes. So great to hear your thoughts. Yeah. And I agree, it's just such a witty, entertaining story. The plot is pretty minimal. It is. In the end, it is. two girls it's a bit who episodic, the way lose they go their along. Fortune. Yes, yes yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but they do make good in the end, which is so satisfying. I always find that the lark reminds me so much somehow of the importance of being earnest yes now you said that to me and I thought of course that's what it reminds me I mean it reminds me of her children's books he knows course, his children's yeah. books but when you said that it went cling and I know exactly why you you carry on with that idea <laughs> <laughs> yes well I think there's that wit like Jason said to her writing mm-hmm. I mean it lacks the genius of Oscar Wilde of course but there's that useful quality to it as well that makes me think of Cecily <laughs> and yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the sorts of things she yes, would say I yes. think as well she captures that idyllic British summer yeah which makes you think of tea parties on the lawn which is of course very Oscar Wilde and very the importance of being earnest too um but also some of the farce that you have in the lark reminds me of the importance of being earnest the way that some characters are invented absolutely Bambury of course <laughs> yes, in the importance yes, yeah. of being earnest and then the girls aren't <laughs> yes that is really very funny you it know? really is no, I I she, she did that beautifully <laughs> she did it so well and mm. it just reminds me of an Oscar Wilde play yes somehow. I can see that and I think too the lark transports you back to um you know the early 20th century yeah. In the United Kingdom, you really are going backwards in time when you read this book. And it brings that whole world alive. But it made me want to watch um, the film of the importance of being earnest to get an after reading this. I think we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, 
But as well as the lightness, like you were saying, yeah. Inez, but it also touches on some darker themes. You know that the First World War has happened. Mm-hmm. And there's definitely a theme of class, social class distinctions. Yes. The importance of the girls being chaperoned. Yes. And another comfort book club reader, um, Gina from Pennsylvania, left a message for us and she pointed out some of the themes from the book that resonated with her. And one of those themes was the importance of respectability in the Mm. novel. So let's hear Gina's message now. Hello, Miranda, Donna, and fellow Comfort Book Club members. This is Gina, and I'm calling in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the U.S. I absolutely adored this month's read, The Lark. And two themes struck me. The first was how attitude determines a situation. Jane and Lucilla lost practically everything, yet they chose to view it all as a lark. And while there are moments of despondency, they always come around to choosing to see the silver lining of the situation. And the second theme, which is also a driver for some very humorous moments, is respectability. It was not respectable for young women to be socializing unchaperoned with males who were not relatives. And of course, we get Lucilla's play acting as a result of this, which also shone a light on generational divide. So one of my favorite passages was Jane's dream in the opening of chapter 18, that vivid description of John Rochester as a judge, but dressed as Hamlet with a plumed headdress, just had me cackling with laughter. I found myself really enjoying the lark and laughing my way through it, and it left me feeling uplifted and wanting a bit of a lark myself. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Gina. I'm thank so you so much, Gina. Glad I'm so glad you, you enjoyed did. it so much. Yeah, and find it all a lark. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you want to have a lark. It does. Own. It does. <laughs> um, but yes, I love how Inez but really does view life as a lark and encourages you to do so. Yes. And those themes that Gina pointed out in the book um, were very interesting to think about. I found it interesting there is that generation divide as Gina said too which when you think Inez but was writing it as an older person yes she made a real point of saying how though the youth of the day might be respectful to elderly people they still sort of ignored them I know I know you know through the character of um Lucy as as the aunt and her experiencing what it's like to be an older person and that being such a shock to her yeah yeah um, that was really moving it was there was a lot wasn't there there was of course Mr Dix and Mm -hmm. his scenario and the sadness of that and Helen um Antrobus's experiences with helping um you know, the soldiers who'd come back from the war. Who yes, were and she was an interesting character. She was, um, very much. I mean, Studying, it's... Uh, w- w- what was it, political well, economy. economy. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. also um, the way that she changed by the end of the novel and her experience in the war had changed her. She yes. realised her um, infatuation for Mr. Rochester was in fact just Actuate. that. Exactly. An and, and he says about her that, oh, the war made her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She found some worthwhile outlet for all her... Mm. I mean, she was a very capable woman. Yes. You know, and, yes. and that's given praise. Yes. I thought it was really interesting that E. Nesbitt herself was... Actually, to my surprise, reading reading the biography was actually not for giving women the vote, at least mm. not during the period just before the First World War. I don't know if she changed her ideas later. But yes, I was surprised just, yeah. by that when you told me. Yeah. Um, because she, in she, some ways she seemed to really believe in she young was bit, women she did, having, having the right to work and make their yeah, own living. Yeah, and seeing that they might well have the necessity, which of course she did, Yes, to yes. do that. Yes, she very um, much wrote for money. But I think... Part Part of her Fabian um, idealism or uh, ideas, anyway, was that she didn't want to give 
conservative women the vote mm. so she would pref- you know like she didn't want yes. that happening so her ideas were a bit muddled in some yes, ways I, 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 I think yes and, yes they um, weren't they weren't perhaps how we would think at all obviously no, and and no. she had different thoughts on it but I did think you know even with the way she called it hope cottage and yes. I think that's really true there was always mm. this as- aspiration towards positive action and yes. women being able to create their own future and things and I thought mm. it was so interesting that um well house which cedar court is very much um based on based on exactly it was a house in elton which i think was only demolished in the 50s and mm. there's still a sort of um you know sort of garden area that mm. you know is part and of the Inez original that lived there. she did mm. so she was very much writing a description of it because she knew at the point she was writing I think that it would have to be sold they, they'd had some success in the war doing growing flowers making marmalade mm. raising um getting selling eggs uh, and raising chickens and things yeah. all the things that you sort of yes. see I think she put a lot of herself and her own life experiences and ideas she into really this did, book. I think. Yeah. And it was interesting thinking of her socialist ideas yeah. coming into the novel and there is a lot about class and class distinction what is appropriate for young ladies um but there is some mingling of the classes going on within the home yes which i thought was very interesting gladys is such a a fabulous character character. oh my goodness i thought she was brilliant i mean yes there is still some stereotyping of the lower classes in the book um but there is a very positive relationship between yes. the girls and their cook and Gladys yes, and yes. Um, they sort of help each other they I do feel. they do yes even the young men buying the flowers the workmen yes. who walk along the road and yes you know all that yeah, yeah. exactly um, but another important theme in the book is of course this idea of enchantment and this fairy tale like yeah. story and I mean you can tell that the last was written by the same author of Five Children and It and The Enchanted Castle. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And another reader of the Comfort Book Club books left a message and she also noticed this theme of enchantment. So let me play um, Celeste's message. Celeste from the USA. Hi, Miranda and Donna. It's Celeste from Rochester, New York. Miranda, I've been enjoying your videos. A special hello to Donna. I understand that you attended the University of Toronto, and I also went there in the 1980s at St. Michael's College. So hello. On to the Lark by E. Nesbitt. It was a very charming and easy to read book. I wanted to discuss my favorite part, the scene where Jane is in the clearing with the Japanese lanterns and John Rochester spies her from the trees. E. Nesbitt really excels at the magical aspects of everyday life and the way she describes John's face appearing at just the right moment makes you think about what magic really is or what it can be. I would call this everyday magic or magic for adults. Synergy, synchronicity, coincidence, and it was a charming way for E. Nesbitt to transition from writing for children to writing about the magic of the everyday that we adults can experience. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that. Oh, thank you, Celeste. Yes, thank you so much, Celeste. And yes, uh, definitely I was at University of Toronto in the 80s, but I was a Trinity College girl, not 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 the same college as you, but still there. <laughs> uh, that's a nice coincidence, yeah. talking of coincidences yes, yes. Um, in the book. And yes, I think The Lark is very much a fairy tale for yes. grown-ups. Yes, very um, much. There is that definite feel to the book. Yeah, Just the way that... People also turn out to be not who they're meant to be. And yes. there's a, some trickery that goes on in the yeah. book with thinking of the pigs or paying yes. guests. Yes, yes. Um, when people do turn out to be unexpected. And I like, though, that there's no sort of true villain in the no, book. It really no, not at all. stays very yes. light-hearted. Yes. And that 
is lovely. But yes, it starts with this kind of incantation almost yes. at the beginning yes. Yes. Um, of true love. And I love how that is resolved at the end of the story Absolutely. as well. Yeah, there's sort of a rite of passage at the beginning mm. and at the end too with that, yes. you know. And I think you're right about the everyday ma- magic, mm. um, Celeste. I, I think I would agree with that. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, they really do enjoy the girls, the sort of everyday pleasures of yeah. life from their sort of homemade teas to picking flowers and yeah. playing tennis together. Yeah. And I think there's also that everyday magic of home life that yes, she really absolutely. describes as well. Yeah. And Ines Bit was a big fan of William Morris. You can really see that. I think you yes. can, can't you? Yes. I think she really would have believed in his philosophy of everyday things needing to be practical as well as beautiful. Yes, absolutely. And she has such a joy and pleasure in describing things in the home the home interiors I love all the descriptions of Hope Cottage and then Cedar Court and even Mr Dix's cottage yes, too yes and how much pleasure the girls take in uh, making a home in all these yeah. different houses and another comfort book club reader Victoria sent a voice message for us and she very much noticed how much Inez Bit loved describing interiors. So let's listen to Victoria's message. This is Victoria from um, South California. Hi Miranda and Donna. This is Victoria from Southern California. I want to thank you so much for suggesting The Lark. It was a relief to open up this book after reading a lot of serious literary fiction that's on the Booker Prize shortlist. In my edition of The Lark, there was a really wonderful introduction that was all about E. Nesbitt's unbelievable life, which sounded just like a novel to me. After the introduction, of course, I jumped into the sparkling exchanges between Jane and her alter ego, Lucilla, and all of their escapades at Cedar Court and Hope Cottage. The characters and situations really engaged me, but nothing was better than Nesbitt's descriptions of fabric, furniture, houses, plants, beautiful gowns. This is an author who loved everything in the physical world and really knew how to describe it. Although I know I was supposed to favor Jane, I found myself really warming to Hilda Antrobus. She wasn't at all elfin, but she was very appealing nonetheless, and I wanted to know more about her. I really enjoyed Nesbitt's many quotable observations, some humorous, some otherwise, about marriage, love, and life. Certainly the most profound was, Bacon is an admirable brain tonic. I'm going to end by saying long live the Comfort Book Club and thank you. Oh, thank you thank so you. much, Victoria. Um, yeah. That was brilliant. I loved that quote as well. Oh, I thought that was amazing. So true, of course. Yeah. <laughs> From a bacon lover. Yeah, so <laughs> when I have a difficult problem I have to tackle next, yeah. so I'll try eating some bacon. bacon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, as I so agree too that Inez Bit loved describing mm. physical things, the descriptions of the clothing, yes, um, the china, the silverware, the, the fabric, Persian rugs, you know, this yes, sort of exactly. thing. Yes, it's beautiful. And there was an episode from the book that we both absolutely yes. loved yes. about material. Do you yeah. want to share that? Um, yes, of course. The girls are actually using curtains, beautiful curtains, obviously very expensive curtains, but they're cutting them up to make themselves some outfits. And they're refurbishing a chair. Oh, you're right. Yes, they're refurbishing a chair (laughs) with this amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing some bacon. Yes, no, no, that's right. They they did do a lot of um, dressmaking as well, didn't they? But this time it was actually 
um, the chair. You're so right. But there's a little aside um, where she says, The curtains were lined and bordered with faded rose-coloured Chinese silk and pounds could not have bought their like. Shillings, on the other hand, and not so very many of them either, could have bought the cretin. Is that how you say it? Cretin? Cretin, maybe. Cretiny? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it's obviously a cheap material they used for light, uh, for doing chairs in those yes. days. Pity, but do not despise these inexperienced housekeepers. They did not know. How should they? Even the most charming girls do not know everything. There was a girl once who cut up a fine hand-woven linen sheet to line a dress with and thought she was being economical. But that is another and a sadder story. <laughs> I think there's I a love lovely these authorial it, sides sides that yes. you get. Yes. yes. And the, yes, they could have used some cheap chintz or yes, something yes, just yes, as well yes, to yes. refurbish these yes. chairs that they unknowingly were cutting up really expensive <laughs> lovely um, Chinese silk yeah. yes yes yeah uh, yeah I really enjoyed that and thought it was uh yeah one of my favorite little passages yeah. from the book but I think too that as much as the lark was a book of its time yeah. and you know depicted that Era, era yeah, um, yeah which I think it does very well yeah there is a timelessness to some of there it is. as well especially in these messages of the book in terms of trying to find the positive in life yeah. treating life as an adventure yes eating bacon yes, if you're not a vegetarian yes, yes, yeah. and you need some brain power <laughs> also um, the way they walked you know whenever yes, they had a problem that's right yeah. yes I know yeah. how, how modern does some of yes. that advice sound and a French reader Madeleine left us a voice message in which she talked about how modern some of the lark seems and how reading it reminded her a bit of some of these self-help books that you can get nowadays. Um, so let's listen to Madeline's message. Hi Miwanda, hi Donna. I am Madeleine, a French reader from Caen in Normandy, and I am so pleased to take part in the Comfort Book Club this month. The Lark, it's a wonderful discover, and I read it with a real pleasure. Many pages are hilarious. The false hound played by Lucilla is such a good funny twist. But I was surprised by another point during my reading. This book was written in 1919, but it sounds very modern. At the beginning of the story, Jane and Lucilla have to struggle with a very tricky situation. They are alone, with a very small income to live. But instead of being lost and desperate, they decide to see the life as a lark. We must think of ourselves as adventurers with the whole world before us, frightfully interesting, said Jane. They try new activities like selling flowers or having guests, the sole well-named pigs. They meet and trust new people as Mr. Dix. They dare and it works. In a way, it reminds me the usual purpose of personal development books we can read these days. How to be confident, progress in life and make positive attracts positive. For me, the lark does the job very well, with a remarkable bonus, a wonderful sense of humour. Thank you so much for sharing this amazing book with us. Oh, thank you so much, Madeline. Yes, <laughs> so bienvenue, glad... Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you enjoyed it. And I yeah. really agree that there is a timeless aspect as yes. well to yes. the story. There is. Which I think makes it really enjoyable. Really a lovely read. And also, just as she said, there is this personal responsibility and they take it in this joyful mm. way, the girls. Yes, you I, know, think I think that's really lovely. inspiring. It is. Yeah. But... 
Thank you so much to all of you who sent in a message to add to our discussion of the lark. We so enjoyed hearing from all of you. And do everyone else let us know yeah. if you enjoyed the book, what you thought of it, if you found it an inspiring read as well. I know I certainly did. But before we end this episode too, I do want to share the next Comfort Book Club choices that are coming up. So I've already announced October's choice, which is Persuasion. Which I know you can't wait for this Yes, I'm too. so looking forward yeah. to this one. I think it's my very favourite Jane Austen novel, and that's saying a lot. Yeah. So, so excited for that one. And then, let me make sure I get the order right. So... We have chosen a non-fiction book for November. Yes. And this is a brilliant memoir, Wintering by Catherine May. Read this a few years ago when it first came out and I absolutely loved it. It's all about the lessons we can learn from nature, in particular the season of winter and how difficult times can in fact... Um, be valuable in our lives and I really really enjoyed it there's a lot about um the power of books and there's a really nice bit about Christmas reading in yes. this which I yes. really liked too so I thought this would be a great November pick and then December's choice is a children's book one that I think is a real modern classic. Yeah. We love to read children's books yes, at Christmas do. time. Yeah. I think it's just that season for nostalgia. Yeah. Um, and this is a modern one that I absolutely love. It's The Van Der Beekers of 141st Street by Karina Jan Glazer. And it's a perfect Christmassy read. Mm. It's set in the run up to Christmas. And it's just a really charming family story about... Um, a group of children and their parents who live in Harlem and it's just a lovely cozy read and then for January we have chosen a favorite <laughs> Agatha Christie book a yeah. Miss Marple mystery because Miss Marple mysteries I think are the coziest yeah. and 450 from Paddington is a real favorite of ours yes. it starts on Christmas Eve and then goes through into January so yeah. I Very think it will be a good choice yes. for that month. So, yes, really excited for our upcoming choices. I hope you'll enjoy them as well. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.